the, the base what, what part of the base uh, okay the part i wish i could i wish i could <laughs> share I, I should try sharing something but you talk you're talking about like the mirror cell or something or no because it's in a tube the eight inches in a tube so it's in a sonotube, tube and it's the um it's the it's the base support for the tube so the ba the the tube has uh it has rings uh wood rings on either side that's going to run in the in the uh in the teflon bearings so the bearings mm -hmm. everything's right there it's just that when it sits on this base it it it's not so it's not really solid and the bearings don't really ride in in the um in the female part of the of the bearing, they don't ride there very well. They they want to they want to come off the track. They want to go. They want to jump off. And you know what I did is I put some little uh, little fingers on either edge of the side of it of wood to keep it riding in the center of that bearing. But it still doesn't want to. It doesn't want to stay there. It just doesn't ride evenly. But once you get your target, why it's it's fine. And and balancing it, you have to kind of. Oh, there you go. Now, you know, this is a perfect example. You can see where the bearings are. Right below the bearings, there's wooden. Um, yeah, that's them right there. Now, those wooden clips are to keep that bearing tracking in the in the in the uh, in in the uh, the base. Um, what turns out is that the 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 open part of the base where the tube is when you when you slew the tube or when you uh you slew the 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 uh, tube downward altitude wise um that open part is kind of a little flimsy so what i did you can see on the sides there i put a vertical piece of wood uh on uh, just near the e the end of the uh put the cursor down right there that's it and those vertical pieces of wood they run they run all the way down to the base of the, of the circle on the base and that stiffened it quite a bit, but I don't think enough. I think it could have been really much stiffer. And I started thinking of ways, well, how could I put something in there that would really keep it stiff? What did they do on other scopes? Like how, what did, how did Orion handle that? Well, they had these, Orion had these really thick sides that were super stiff and they had really thick uh, vertical pieces of wood coming out from the, from the sides of the base. And that really kept it stiff. And I don't think mine's stiff enough. I think it's a little bit flimsy. Looks like uh, Mike has a comment. Um, is it open on both sides? Uh, it's open on the on the left side in this picture. On the back side, there's slats of wood. You can barely see them. There's a lower slat there and an upper slat above. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Um, why don't you try and replace those two slats with a one continuous piece of uh of material that would make it uh more rigid i think it might it might i, I had a trick of, a, of a, a carpenter buddy of mine um told me a trick one time and we had we were working in our dental lab and mike the, the, there was a vertical wall it was just a pony wall that was made between two benches and you could reach your hand out and literally shake that wall and it would move maybe six inches one way and then the other. It was just terrible. So he said, now watch this Tim. And he went and got a sheet of plywood that was a quarter inch thick at the most. It might've even been less. And yes. he nailed that to the sides, either side of that wall. And he said, now shake it. And you could, you, you could move it, but barely, just barely. That's called and, sheer webbing. That was uh, one of the advances for, uh, mo um, uh, airplane manufacturers designed uh, where they didn't need any wires anymore. They had the shear webbing that gives mm -hmm. you re re rigidity. The um, the area doesn't have mm -hmm. to be thick. And so what you might be able to do is just get some masonite uh -huh. um, and prove it to yourself and just kind of like take off those um, take off the uh, parallel pieces of wood and just nail that on there and you might be much happier with the way that rigidity is rigidity back there is okay it might help it a lot um, but, but it might be flexing um yeah it is flexing bit. 
It is flexing. So the open part to the left in this picture, that flexes there slightly. And I, you know, it, his comment to me was every little piece that you add, Tim, is going to stiffen it. So it's not just one or the other. It's every single piece you add is going to stiffen it. Now, if I put another vertical piece of wood that's on the side there, if I added one more onto the side, and uh, it, it may, yeah, right there, uh, and where Tom's showing, right in the middle, and, and make it bigger, uh, it might really, uh, you know, uh, uh, it might really make it a lot better. Oh, and another thing, another thing, you guys, is that, that I'm unhappy with. If you look at the bearings, there's knobs on them. You can loosen those knobs and you can move the bearing assembly up and down the tube. The problem with that is that the struts that are between the bearings, they're not, the, the tube isn't uniform. It's like it's, it's, it's round here and all along there. It, it, when, when you try to pull that bearing assembly up or down, it'll go, but it's really a tug of war. And uh, you can see that little white thing that he's, that Tom is circling there. That's a plastic wedge. It's actually a kind of a rubber, a hard rubber wedge I got from McMaster Car. And I put one of those on either side that you could shove down there. And the reason when I put a eyepiece in this scope and a relatively light eyepiece, it just wanted to slide, the whole tube wanted to slide down. So I just said, hey, this, I've got to make this more rigid because in time, this tube is going to soak up water, air, it's going to soak up, soak up moisture. I mean, I covered it with about, I don't know, four or five layers of these epoxy uh, 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 spray paint. Uh, so it's been sprayed inside and out, but it oh. just doesn't look like it's stiff enough. Hi, Dick. Hello. Hi. So, uh, so I'm, all in all, Mike, I'm, I don't know. It's, it's there. The idea was there. I like the fact that I went there. But had I to do it again... I don't think I'd use this design. I think I'd create a new design. And, yeah. and it, it, it seems to me that um, you're putting stress where the, the knobs are, you know, pressing it. Uh -huh. And I know that you've got small um, pieces um, that are not supported where they're pressing against the tube. Yeah. Uh, and so um, what you can't see is those rings are flexing they're, they're, you know, it's sort of like, it's, 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 it's curving. You, you, you probably can't see it, but um, the, the, the rings are kind of like, um, they're kind of like curved like that, okay? Where the, uh, this part is where you got the two, um, tightening rods and the other part is where they're pressing against the tube and maybe what you can't see is that there's a springiness in the in the wood okay that's i would giving. think the springiness is in the sona tube that sona tube is it's not that stiff hmm. it, it, are those screws that you've got going through there maybe they're kind of like crushing it a little bit you know that you got well, the from going from one side of the ring to the other ring on the uh -huh. other side. Uh, maybe, I'm wondering if those are kind of like doing that sort of thing. To it. They are. The, maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm relying. I'm look, relying on compression to uh, to to make the scope uh, keep it from from sliding. So but maybe what I, you ought to do, maybe what you ought to do is you've got those small, um, you know, circular notches that are pressing against the tube. Mm -hmm. You need to make those more of a full circle, and that probably would uh, distribute the load around the uh, oh, two. What, what you don't see in this picture, Mike, is that I actually created uh, four different spherical corners on the insides of the rings. Yes, I know, but they, and, they, they probably could be uh, better if they were almost a complete circle. So that when okay. you you tighten okay. it, they're they're almost touching. That might okay. give you that might save the design. The other design, the other design flaw on this, Mike, is is really go back to the drawing board and and think about this. Is that how about if I just put a track, a dovetail track on either side of the tube, affix a dovetail track on either side, 
And then on the insides of these rings, you have these two, these these knobs. They would actually uh, they could pinch. They could have a, another dovetail slot in there. And when I pinch, <laughs> when I tighten those knobs, they just they tighten against the the uh, track. So that way I, I can. I just had another thought. Okay, uh, again with my idea. Okay, you might be able to get away with dispensing with the rods and and the knobs, but if where my fingers almost touch. Yeah. You, um, if they're continuous, in other words, they're square where it goes on the round circular ring. And then when they go around on either side, you might be able to use something like, um, look at um, what are those spring, you know, uh, they use for closing luggage, you know, where it, it, it snaps, it's springy, right? Where, right where they meet on either side that might give you enough compression oh, to, oh okay okay and and so in 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 other words um you could uh, uh, attach those where those knobs are okay and i i know the idea is that you want to um loosen it easily so that you can put it down and stow it so what you might be able to do is you know, undo the latches, pull it up, and then spring both of them together, and that might uh, that might uh, have enough tension to keep it uh, steady because the, there's a lot of force they can generate. Yeah, I, that, I, I I understand, but here again, it's a comp that's a compressing force. Yes, it, but it, it's it, distributed around. It's evenly distributed. It's more evenly, right? And, I, and I get that. So the so the compression would be even all the way around, and it wouldn't yeah. crush it. But to yeah. me, an improvement would be to put a dovetail, uh, a dovetail on the side, just a dovetail bar that goes down vertically on this tube, and affix it in by through bolting it in the tube, and then now you have another small dovetail. That runs on uh, on you know laterally on the on the inside of the rings, and then all you got to do is tighten these little knobs. They would go and just they would you know they just tighten friction wise, mm -hmm. tighten onto the dovetail bar, and that and that's now that that's not compressing the ring at all. I think it's compressing one dovetail bar, one dovetail against another dovetail. So that's I mean I I see that as a win there, because now you're not messing with the you're not messing with the rings they're not going to flex and you're not messing with the tube it's not going to flex it's just the bar the the dovetail bars so tim I, I, what what about just friction on the inside just the friction material just on the inside of the ring right where it touches the tube there i tried that and believe me there's there is something in there um i can't remember what it was i think i put a felt in there that was a rough felt and it really just doesn't do it. It just doesn't do it. As a matter of fact, there's more felt on the inside of these. If you could see uh, on at a, on the ring towards us, where the left uh, dowel is, um, just above Tom, you, you go above uh, to the right, up above there. There now, see the wood piece. You're right there. That wood. That's on. That's on the inside. Uh, above on each side and below on each side. There, the um, that dovetail is there. I mean, not dovetail, but the little circles, and they kiss the sides of the of the of the ring itself, as well as more felt on the insides of the ring that kiss the sides of the tube, and it still is something that is just. It's just it's not a smooth riding adjustable unit. It's not smooth. It's a real it's a tug of war to get that tube to slide forward and back. To adjust the, the balance, so just not. I'm just not happy with. It. I don't think it's a good design. I appreciate what Mike's saying is because he's saying you just make a circle around it, so it's compressing it evenly. It's similar and, to it's similar to like refractors with a clamshell. Yes, you know. Yes, you're it, you're you have more area that you can generate um, the friction. Yeah, yeah. I I appreciate that. I think that idea is 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 valid. Um, that's, the Sona tube is really cardboard, 
And yeah. eventually, I think it's going to be subjected to a lot of outside weather. And I put, like I said, I put a lot of epochs, coats of epoxy on it. I don't know how impervious that is to the uh, to the weather. The on the top of the of the tube and on the bottom of the tube, I put this uh, this rubber uh, trim that had a it has a uh, little track in it, so you can just squeeze it over the ends of the. What of, you do to the end of the tube underneath the, the rim you put on? <clears throat> yeah. Did you paint okay. that? Uh, no, I actually. Okay, you need to paint that because that's the exposed end of all the grains of the layers of cardboard, it and that'll sure that'll wick water in. Yeah. Epoxy is an excellent covering to keep water out, but you've got to cover absolutely the ends too, and the insides of every hole. Yeah, I, I think I think that I did it on the ends, there, Jerry, but I don't remember okay. because it's a spray. I my my gut feeling tells me no, I didn't. Because what I did is it's a press fit of this rubber rubber liner that goes. And then up, spray up. it, spray it into a sheet of aluminum foil and use a brush to dip it in and, and put it on the ends. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And the holes as well. Yeah. It just needs to be waterproof really, really well. This tube is, you know, you know, they're not the sona tubes are not meant to be manufactured so they're absolute perfect circles and they, oh. they, the tolerance. The well, first of all, what most of us do is to go and take the waterproof lining from the inside of the tube because did we that. paint it. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a wax. I did yeah. that. I did that on the inside and out, and it took me a while to get used to that. So the yeah. inside uh, part of it, I took off too much, and I was getting a layer of the cardboard yeah. off in one part. Yeah. So I just these, tubes the frequently, these tubes are frequently conical, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyway, um, there's there's one material I was thinking about using because my brother has a bunch of it because he hasn't used it for years. Monocoat for model airplanes, where mm. it's it's a it's a plastic, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's got a thermal adhesive on the back, and you use an iron to uh, put it on there. So, oh, uh, uh -huh. and so it's by by nature it's uh, it's waterproof. I'm not sure about tree branches, though. We always had problems with that, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty waterproof. Well, Joe Joe Doyle did a, a tube, uh, and I don't exactly know if it's a laminate or if it was a veneer, but he veneered it with a wood. It, it was a, it might have been a, some type of wood laminate or wood veneer, or I don't know what it is, but he's got the scope looks absolutely gorgeous. It's wood, yeah. and it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty impervious to everything. Now, there's another material that I learned of from another um, uh, uh, the, from the group up north. Some of them are experimenting with um, thermal adhesive vinyl for uh, fixing automo automotive stuff, where you can get it in various colors and it's got a nice sheen and all that. Um, but it's probably adds a lot more weight to the space yeah. than, yeah. than Monaco. Or, or paint. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it comes in all sorts of colors. It's it's light. Plus, so it's kind uh, of like a heat shrink, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a heat it's a, and a heat shrink. And you can, um, like with those airplanes, man, you can make some interesting designs. Yeah. Yeah, that looks kind of slick. That, I'm not sure how good. expensive it is now because it's been about 40 years since I built my last model glider but uh it's uh my brother has a bunch mm -hmm. it also smells real nice yeah yeah <laughs> i remember oh. that stuff i remember that stuff has a real weird, weird smell um can i add another comment uh that's off from this scope just kind of end this topic and start another one Perhaps. really quick Tom Totten and I went down to the museum today and we took the 12 and a half inch daub that was literally destroyed uh, that uh, one of the members at a star party, I didn't, there's a, it has a lot of bugs, this, this scope. And it tipped over because it's top heavy. And so I, the mirror came out of its cell, the, uh, the crushed the tail rad, um, the, uh, the collimation was so far off that he, he loosened the uh, uh, here. Here's some of the here's some of the stuff we did, and uh, we went. We washed we washed the mirror, 
and then we took we left it we left the tubes on left the upper cage on and we got the mirror out and started investigating what was going on on the inside of this there what's going on on the inside of that mirror cell and it is in my book it's the biggest joke i've ever seen the the wires that hold the um the um the flotation cells together were sitting on top of screws so that the, that could just like pop off and so it they weren't really captured clean. they weren't captured so tom and i put that under some uh we put those under the the bolts and we start we we got the, the mirror cell off and we started looking at these things and tom you you try to tell them what the hell it was it was the there there they are there's these rubber goodies at the Bombers. bottom of the, of the bottom of the box and the, the bolts, the collimation bolts come up through that. And then there's a washer and a nut that you just tighten down. So they're literally tightened down and those go through the mirror cell and to collimate it, there's three um, knobs on the back of the, of the mirror box that, that are through the screw goes, the, the bolt goes through. And so you start tightening these down and what they're doing to collimate it, it's your, your well, like Tom described it, you're just kind of crushing these little rubber um, circles at the bottom of the mirror box to get it collimated. And it is the biggest fucking joke I have ever seen. You're using it instead of springs. Yeah, that's your springiness, the resistance to your screw. It's horrible. And after a few years that, the rubber's going to lose its yeah, it's going to get harder. Well, well, it's been thirty. It's it, been thirty years so far. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well, there probably you go. They're probably rough. Right. Right. Usually, mm -hmm. what happens? It's not a perfect scope to begin with. So, what usually happens is that there's three knobs in the back. There's a vert. There's a one at the top, at the apex, of, and then two of the the other two knobs are at the sides. So, you what in, usually ends up happening is that the one at the top is loose and one of the sides is loose and the other one is tightened down to the point where you can barely turn it just to get the center dot to, 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 to cover the, to, to collimate. Well, we actually got it collimated. We couldn't believe it. We actually got the motherfucker. We got it collimated and we went down to the uh, observatory and the moon was up so we took a look at it. And uh, you know, at night it's, it should work pretty good until this guy gets a hold of it again. <laughs> but uh, so I, you know, I, I noticed. I uh, you know, thought that guy was forbidden from using this recently. Oh, uh, that's not going to happen. He's he, just Chris did bring in a replacement tail rad, so that was nice. Enterprise Optics is the mirror. No, the, this mirror was. Uh, Tom took a look at it today. It's, it says uh, uh, by Enterprise Optics is what it said. That's right. And, that's what I said. And it's an so, F5, 12 and a half inch mirror. And it's a good mirror. It's yeah. a, it's a, it, it's because not Enterprise a did good stuff. Did they really? Yeah, they were I never, good. I never heard of it and Tom hadn't heard of it. So we didn't, we didn't <laughs> yeah. know what to say. Um, yeah. I, had a, I had a friend that had a company making Dobsonians and that was one of his go-to. Okay. I, I think Jerry wanted to say something. Yeah, the fact that you have your screws so a non-uniform intention when you you're collimating the main mirror by tipping and tilting it that indicates that your supports for the main mirror support system needs to be shimmed so it's closer to um, collimation when all the screws have roughly the same tension on it you don't I want to be in a situation where you have one cranked all the way down and the other two partially loose now jerry i totally agree with that but now where do I put the shims? Do I put it under the mirror cell or do I put it, do I adjust that with the, uh, with the, with the uh, truss tubes? Where the, where the mirror, where those screws go through, you know, yes. they push and pull on the mirror cell from the bottom. Yes. But they go through some plate with it that's threaded, right? No, they come, they, they literally pop through and they pop through these rubber gaskets. Pop, pop through what? What's threaded? Uh, it's it's a it's a nut with the with the washer. That's it. There's nothing threaded. Where? Well, the nut is threaded. So, 
You're telling yeah. me that this thing pushes on the mirror? No, the, the, these these screws here Go are down. captured captured by this plate. And so on the other side of this plate, there's a lock washer and a nut. And that lock washer and nut uh, lays in the rubber uh, bushing and the, and the screw is very long. It goes through the back and then you have yeah. uh, the big plastic uh, uh, thumb screw uh, heads to tighten down, to squeeze uh, this pull back on this plate. Uh, right, and what does, the, what does the thumb screw press against to cause the mirror cell to tilt? Just just the washer and the, and the board in the back, yeah. Okay, the yeah. board in the back needs to be shimmed with respect to the, the box that it's in. Huh. I wonder if that would work. Well, you, you, what you need to do is get a little freedom in that, box, in that board at the back, and then you need to set the board so are these screws, so they're all about equal tension. And then you okay. need to start tipping the board with shims until that gets the spot in the center of the mirror. And that uh -huh. aligns the mirror. Okay, it may, we may not, we may be able to add a, a washer. Um, we may be able to add a washer, but uh, would the same effect be by putting a shim underneath the rubber gasket or the rubber what did you call it? Bushing on the inside? Couldn't we raise the bushing? No, I would, leave, I would leave the bushing alone. And I okay. would do this with just, you know, get that thing set. So the mirror and the back plate and the mirror cell, the mirror is about the same distance from the mirror cell all the way around. The screws are all roughly the same tension. And then the plate that goes in the back, and I do this with the plate up, that's the back of the mirror box, completely out of the box. And then I take that and put it in the box and move it so that you can get uh, an alignment and then measure where that is and go in and glue strips of wood on the back of that plate. Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll leave it alone, Tim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we when you do this, I'll come by and look at it with you and show yeah. you what I mean. When, when yeah. is the when is the meeting going to be? I uh I don't know what what what, what meeting are we talking about? General meeting or are we talking you, about me and you, me and maybe Tom meeting at the museum to look at this telescope, just like you did today. Oh, okay. It, it, yeah. It's done. It's finished. <laughs> oh, uh, no, uh, no, I want to see it. Okay. We can do this. How about if we do this next week? Okay. And we'll try for like something like a Tuesday. Okay. I'll, I'll contact you and I'll contact Tom and we'll try for something like next Tuesday. Okay, good. And I'll bring over all that grinding and polishing stuff that I promised I'd bring to you once, but I, I dropped the ball. Oh, don't don't worry, Jerry. <laughs> if I, I get any more of that stuff, my wife's gonna kill me. So, I, 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 how much of it is? Or is there a ton of it? No, no, no. Just maybe five hundred pounds, but not a ton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm by, by the way, this telescope this telescope was made by company Star Splitter. And the box yeah. down here, you could fit a 16 inch mirror down inside this thing, yes. probably. It's, 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 it's huge. pretty, it's pretty it's oversized. Huge. Yeah. And the upper cage is really top heavy. It's, it's, uh, um, when I think Art went in there and he tightened it down because I think Chris kept on trying to take the, 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 the uh, truss tubes out and then put them back in and take the, the, the uh, upper cage off and put the upper cage back on. And then he put it on backwards. So the yeah. collimation was all backwards. I remember all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, put, I, I put it together uh, to hold it so we didn't have to, and, and made sure we could roll it easy and so we didn't have to keep playing with the truss tubes every time. And it's yeah. been doing pretty well that way. And it, it did get uh, banged up mm -hmm. when the, our, our, initial, our old shed got run over by their tractor or whatever. And <laughs> so that, that, that's why some of these truss holders were broken off. But Holy <laughs> mackerel. This Star, is Star Splitter, you know, I just the thought just came occurred to me that was Jim Brunkella's company, wasn't it? A guy from VCAS. He had a 
I'm not sure of that. Yeah, so the those probably were made around uh, in the in the nineties. Hmm. So how about Jerry? That we leave this by saying that next Tuesday I'll I'll get in touch with you and Tom and we'll we'll uh, okay. And in the meantime, I think Tom wanted to do one more talk about rescheduling this workshop at a different time. Uh huh. So we we have to talk about that still, right, Tom? You're right. We'll we'll get to that. But okay. See what other people have to say about thing. Here's some other star splitters. Man, that, look, that looks good. Yeah, it's a nice shield there. Yeah. By the way, Pretty Tom, fancy, that shield, fancy. that piece of cloth that you had for that, I, what, all I did was I went to the fabric store and they had this really sheer, stretchy black material. And then I just kind of, the reason I set it up in the dark is so you can't see what I did to it. But I put Velcro on it so you can stretch it around the tube and then Velcro it together so you get that light skirt to, to work better. Uh, it really does help. Holy smokes. Look That's at that. Really Oh, you had a nice you had a nice picture down there of the back of the mirror box. Did you find oh, that really? somewhere down there? We flashed on it very quickly. Yes. That's a fancy one. Uh -huh. That is not that ain't this one. <laughs> no, it's not that one. Maybe it was foggy down. I don't see. Oh, well, easy yeah. come, easy go. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, I'm, I'm serious, Jerry. This thing is a, it's a, it, it can be fixed, but, you know, the best way to fix it can be is, fixed. What's that? Of course it can be fixed. Yeah, it can be fixed, but it, it, a redesign would really fix it. Maybe. The, the, the mirror, the mirror cell's a joke. Yeah, that's not it. That ain't well, that's, not, that's nice. That's a university optics mirror cell, adjustable mirror cell. That's what I have for the little eight. Yeah, that, that does look like it because the three bolts go through. Yeah. They actually were pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're not bad. I'm not sure they're still in business, but. No, no, they're closed. They're oh, closed. Really? Oh, wow, uh, bummer. Yeah, I got that's what I got on my eight inch. I have that little, I have the university optics. It looks, yeah. pretty, it looks pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it's a oh boy. Oh, I have okay. never, I've never seen collimation bolts, I mean, knobs that compress a, uh, a piece of rubber. I've just never seen that. <laughs> well, it's exactly the same as just having a spring there. Yeah. yeah. Except it's cheaper and quicker. Wow. It's just, it's weird. Uh, I might, I might add, we ran into Javier, which is our ex. Uh, I, hope, I hope it didn't hurt him. No, he was, a, he was, he's really nice. He's teaching astronomy for City College now. Good. So anyway, that's it for me, guys. I'm no, no more, no more hurt for me. <laughs> okay. Good Who do we go to? Ed, Ed, uh, Ed, any success on your auto guiding? Um, yes and no. Um, I'm amazed that all the electronic stores and whatever companies that I looked at, nobody had a uh, female US, mini USB connector to an RS-232. Finally, in the last, like yesterday, uh, I found two companies, one's in Connecticut, and I called them, and the guy, I don't know, he tried to tell me what he had was not a mini USB connector, but it was a special connector for some measuring balance uh, item. Uh -huh. uh, and then I went to uh, another company which had the exact same thing at uh, twice the price, uh, and it does look like a mini uh, USB. They call that in both cases, or at least one case, they call that a um, mini US uh, B connector. 
Yeah. I think it's the same thing as a USB. That's not a B connector though down there. That's that isn't? No. The B connector is squarer than that. That's flat and rectangular. That's you like you would plug into a Canon camera. That's a camera connector. But I don't know the number for it. Oh. But a B is so get, like there, that looks like a C. Yeah, it looks like a C. That's the C, but the other one had dimples in it. There's, yeah, there's a, the this mini is a male, a male, and a B. A, this is a female, and I forget the name of that, but it's a mini cable camera cable. Yeah. Oh boy. I, you know what? Maybe that's what this other company has. Is that yeah, maybe if you go to um, look up under OPT or just on the internet, look up Optec O P T E C. And I think they have the cable you're looking for catalog, but I think they are, they're on back order. What's the name again? Optech, O T T. Oh, oh, is it? O P T C T E C. Look over on the far right on the edge, halfway down. Um, USB to RS-323. See, over to the right. Yeah. Or, or there. Yeah, but that's not a mini. What's, what's What do you mean a mini? Uh, I need a mini USB. Oh, you want a, a B or a C. Oh, but that's no problem because there's lots of cables that will go to from A yeah, to any other USB. There it is right there. That's a mini. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There it is. Yeah, yeah this is the one that I saw now. Yeah, yeah they want seventy-two dollars for it. I just saw that yesterday. That's, well, that's oh, wow. that, that's the price range these are going to be in. Wow! Yeah. Unless you it's like go... the only one out there. This YCCO three D O nine. That's the only one that I've seen anywhere. Okay, well there it is. Well, you could always uh, go from um, uh, an A to a mini. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and there's lots of cables that go from an A to a mini. And it'd probably be cheaper, too. Well, a B but is definitely. a printer. What? A B, a USB, is a printer cable. It's not... Well, it's it's an auxiliary no. cable. It goes to all... Yeah. Commonly it, goes to all sorts of things, including yeah. printers. My yeah. camera uses... Well, the one. printer is a square, rectangular thing. It's yeah, not that's, a, that's a USB cable. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a printer. It's a you can universal. use it for anything, printers yeah. or cameras or whatever. Can I, can, like my cameras all use a USB cable. Can I add something? Go ahead. Is, is is the is it possible? I think people have um, uh, adapters to go from USB to USB Mini, don't they? Yeah, yeah that's yes. weird. It's very common. I, I was looking into that, but then I found this one uh, that YCC. So I'm. I think I'll just order that. Is what company is this that you have here? So certifiedscale.com. Oh. Damn, Tom, you find stuff really fast, man. Mm. Unbelievable. Duck, duck, go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Unbelievable. I don't know. For me, in my in my world, I'd get the cheap cable and get the adapters. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's because I'm cheap. And tape them together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you don't need to. There it is right there. Yeah, it's yeah. right there. That's right there. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. 50 bucks. Get two. Okay. Good. Ed, <laughs> you got you to you you write this down, Ed. Yeah, I haven't bought anything off of eBay. It works usually. Yeah, yeah. it's usually okay. Well, here, yeah, look, right. what's this one? That's only ten, five bucks. What? That's from China, isn't it? China. Yeah. No, I saw China has it for so five we'll bucks. Wait till World War Three Word. gets done before you get that. Del um, delivery seven days to seven yeah, to they fourteen. Say. If it's from China, I don't know. <laughs> Get it while it's hot. That's a male instead of female. Well, there's male to female converters right down here in the lower right. Where? Right there. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I should be a no brainer. That's on the mini. The mini no, that's, there. No, that's on the cereal side. That's on the cereal side, right? Yeah. The mini has to be a. a has to be any cable you can think of is out there somewhere. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, they're doing away with the mini uh, USB. Who is? Well, the industry, everything is going to C instead of uh, mini B. Yeah, but your camera is what, a, a, a mini or a C? It's yeah, actually the hand, hand controller for the Celestron has, takes in this, this style. Okay. So he's going from the laptop. Uh, well, hold on, I, I guess you have to go USB from your laptop to serial and then you're taking serial back to here, but I think that other serial converter was a better way to go. That one we showed earlier, that previously. Uh, I plug into my hand controller set with the mini uh, USB. Wow. I need to drop that too. It's, the hand controller is USB mini. I have to, when we're done, there it is. I'm going to look that up. The beans. There it is. Okay. Well, that's it. But, but is that a USB signal? Well, that's oh. the problem. That's why we need the RS-232. Uh, well, so you go from there to the RS-232 oh. and then oh. to the computer. A whole second go down it says next remote cable with usb right down okay right there okay what's yeah. that there that's a hard, hard to see but let's see cloudy nights is picture here i read that article yeah yeah it's as big as it gets well this is a module telephone plug on this one so it's it's that, not the not quite well, the right yeah, one for the, that's what i've got it. Yeah, it's the older system. Mine doesn't okay. work right now. Can't come in. Why do people make stuff that, does, that, that the cables are obsolete? Why do they do that? Good question. Because they have it in the back room and go, okay, we'll put this together. Well, the RS-232 cable is still made because it has those two screws on the side and it has shielding on it to keep it weather tight. So if your equipment is outside or exposed to moisture, that's the plug you want to have. Okay. Gosh darn it. Yeah. What happened to the mini? All right. Uh, anything else, Ed? I guess not. So what's the yes then that you said? What's the what? You said, he said, ask you if you've got your tracking going and you said yes and no. We've been well, looking for no. What about the yes? Uh, the yes is I found that cable uh, just like yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. I don't get it. A one for 48 bucks looked like it was probably a good one. From eBay? Yeah, it looked like a lot less money than 72. And Yeah, seemed like the right one. I don't know if it did the serial conversion for you or not. Just be, or is just a. You got to make sure. I don't know. I don't know why you need the serial. I think you, you, you just need to have a USB to. The mini going going through a serial converter somewhere. Yes, that's correct. You plug the mini into the handset, and that travels through the uh, RS uh, two thirty two into your computer. That's where the conversion's at. That's a different one. That's a that's a phone cable. Right. Had it before. Jeez. Yeah. China. 
Yeah, you need need the real the serial, serial converter are, before this. Okay. But the mini the there, I think here the mini is a male instead of a female. It said male up on the top. Well, you do need a male into into the female part of the Celestron hand controller. That's a male. That's USB right there. That's the USB input, I would imagine, in a in an RS two thirty two output on the on the on the DB nine. Right, but you have to convert this to USB to get back in your laptop. Yeah. Right. I have that cable. But this, but this I think here, this, that has to be a female. No, I think it's I think it's male. I think your your hand controller is a is a female. Well, um, I have a cable in here in front of me that's female that's used to update the software on my uh, my Celestron. And so it's this like is this like this phone cable is a is a male and it plugs into the into the uh, hand old hand controller. The, that's where that right, mini, right. the mini USB is also it's a male and it plugs into the female on the hand controller. I'm pretty sure. No, it, that's incorrect. Really, that's why I got a female. I'm usually not wrong at all. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I like people that are confident. Yeah, that makes one of us. <laughs> With all you really have wrong. You you described your connection correctly. <laughs> and mine is female. <laughs> In my hand, I need female to plug into a male uh, on the uh, controller. See, look at that. That's female. That's sticking out. Where's my yeah, it's, that's, it's female. It's, it's female. female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know how my uh, cable I have in my hand works then. <laughs> I'd like to know too. Whatever. So you've, you've got something that sticks into your hand co controller? Oh. Trying to grab my uh, con hand controller here. That's, uh, oh, great, 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 great. Yeah. yeah, it looks like that, like you got on your picture. That's and that, and then the female goes right around that, that protrusion that you have right in the center there. I and don't the think so. Right sticks, the word oh, oh, metal part oh, sticks those out. Those black dots are female receptors. I, it, it's not sticking I, out of the plastic that much, so it has to. It has something has to stick into it. Trying to find a, a cable here. It should be showing us. I'll say. Well, I'm gonna have to have somebody look at this then. Yeah, that sounds that sounds confusing. See these old uh, telephone type oh. connectors, RJ, RJ something or other, 11s, 45s, 5, yeah. Ed, do you have any, do you have any cable that has a, a, a female or a male uh, USB that would, that you could try in there? Well, that's what I have right here. Yes, I have uh, what I thought that this thing looks like male to me. I mean, when I look in my handset, I see like uh, five little slots up on the top and a green bar underneath them. And then well, when I look at your cable. Camera, yeah, put it up to yeah. the camera. Close. Oh, oh. Let, me, let me stop share here. Uh, I don't know how you do Just that. Put it in I, the cameras. Down at the bottom, there's a share screen button. Yeah, but I don't. Well, well, no, he can just, just hold it up to the camera. Oh, so yeah. the camera. You see it? You can't see. I have to click share. Higher. 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 On top of your, your laptop head. screen, probably. It's probably mm -hmm. a little hole on the top of your laptop. Oh, 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 oh. There, there you go. There you go. Let's go back a little bit. Yeah, back go it up back. a little bit. Uh, it's looking like a. Can you shine some light that, in it? That, that looks like a almost like a like a female one. Yeah, I can't does. tell. Uh, head on. Wait can't, a minute. can't see it. No. I know I can't back, see it either. Back off. Back off. Back up a little bit. More. There. Yeah, the light's not getting in there. Yeah. This, uh, that, that's too bright. Still, yeah. Let me close, close this out. 
Oh. Well, does that fit into your hand controller? That's right. Yes, it does. Okay, uh, that's it. That must that be a male. I'm pretty sure. Just uh, does it go? Does it go around it, the the connector on the hand controller, or does it go to the inside? Do it this way. Wait a minute. Can I? Yeah, uh, you get that in the front. That is a, That's a male. I can't get that thing right. That's good so enough. I think you got a male. Yeah, move it back a little bit and take the light away a little bit. It's too bright. It's too bright. I have to have another light here. There it is. Oh, yeah. That looks like oh, a male. That know. looks like a male. Red light ain't going to do it, is it? Mm -hmm. No, red Maybe. light. That's too bland. You can't see it with red. Maybe next, next they'll have a gender alphabet type connectors too see just like they've got gender identification here for humans yeah they should have it stamped on there yeah stamp it male or female okay so what's what's next on our agenda who has something else dick are you how are you feeling i'm doing really good uh better than pre-op oh good i'm about uh, i'm in my third week of post-op i can sit better I've been doing all kinds of stuff around, you know, the house and been able to walk uh, about uh -huh. three, quarters, three quarters of a mile, which oh, was they, I couldn't did, walk. Dick did, Dick, did they fuse you or did they do a disectomy? No. no, what they did is they did a, a, a laminotomy, which is, they basically, uh, it's bilateral. Okay, so they had to cut out both sides enough of a hole in there to allow the uh, spinal cord to get through uh, the nerve canal because it was all closed off. Okay. Wow. And then they wow. put in a, a device called the Coplex insert, and this is a spacer. It's a device, think of it like a, a kind of a U bracket. Okay, so here's Here's the outside of your, this would be the outside of your spine. So they kind of put this in between the two points of the vertebrae, L4 and L5, and it kind of curls around and it stays inside there. So as opposed to a fusion, you don't lose any range of motion, you see. You can yeah. still turn your spine around and you've got a spacer in there because why? Because they've taken bone mass out, which makes it weaker. So over time, you're going to get settling and that spine's gonna to start to settle down unless it has a spacer in there. So with the spacer in there, that maintains that. It's a titanium uh, insert is what it is. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, I still have some swelling, but I'm able to sit uh, pretty uh, well now, as you can see. I mean, I don't have a brace on at all. Wow. So it's really a game changer as far That's as good. I Yeah, I'm really, really so, 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 Dick, what, what are you working on tonight there? I'm not really working on anything. I just came out here because uh, I thought, you know, uh, just what the heck and see what it would be like to, to do a, a Zoom meeting out here. Now, I noticed I've got to open this door. Sometimes I kind of lose reception. I'm using... Uh, an outdoor access point, which is probably about 200 feet away. Mm. And uh, so it's a little on the marginal side. Now I've got the, uh, I've got these uh, a gateway to the shop now. I just got that installed today. Here I am, I'm up on a ladder and everything else. And this guy is five gigahertz. And I go to a switch in the inside there, I'm gonna put some cameras around the shop on the inside there. I'm thinking about the same sort of a setup out here with one of those guys right there. And then I can heart, I can either do a hard connect or I can get a little local access point out here to uh, off of that guy right there. Now this gateway is like a virtual ethernet cable. In other words, you don't have to configure this thing at all. You just put one side over here and then the other side over here. Now, right now I stand probably maybe, uh, I'm gonna try to see maybe around, I don't know, 80 feet or so away from the two, the two uh, wireless parts right there. So you go uh -huh. ethernet in, wireless across and then ethernet out, see? So, uh, and it works great. I just tried it out today. I got and what's it. that thing called again? 
It is called a wireless uh, bridge. Okay. Um, do you like to see? Now, this one that I've got, you can get these things in all different flavors. What I like about this one is it's virtually transparent to the network. It doesn't care what kind of traffic you're sending down the doggone thing. And, and it doesn't require you to assign any kind of uh, uh, IP address to it or anything like that. It, it just basically acts like a virtual cable that can be up to 10 miles long. Okay. Um, and so that that really has really helped a lot. Uh, and, and I think I can probably put one of those out here and do the same sort of a deal and get a better connection, you know, right? It's okay with the door open uh, at 2.4 gig, but it'd be nice to have a five gig because you get more throughput. Is it windy over there for you? Oh, yeah, yeah no it's fun. been real, real windy. Uh, now I've gone through a couple of storms in this guy and uh, it's done really well. Uh, we had those storms, you know, as, as you guys know, probably what, two, two or three weeks ago or so. And this guy stayed pretty much dry as a bone, even on the floor. So I was pretty pleased with that. Uh, and it's relatively wind uh, okay. I had to stuff some, some foam up at the top between the roof panel and the, and the bottom part to keep the wind from kind of going up through there. I've done some uh, photography. I've got one, uh, one image here that, uh, let me see if I can get it up here. But um, one of the things I think the doggone camera network might be causing some problems because I've still got the um, pan tilt zoom on this guy. And so I think that what's going on there is it's probably uh, interfering a little bit. The light is interfering a little bit. I'll show you something that I did, though. I can pull it up here. Um, and this was uh, what this is. Let me get over here, get you on board here. Come on. This is centered on. NGC 4274, that's that's NGC 4274 right there. It's basically in Coma Verita, Vinicius, I think it is. It's, a, it's one of those coma clusters of galaxies that are in there. Look at that nice barred spiral down toward the that bottom. That thing is so freaking cool. And see now what I did here too, which I liked was I, I used some on-sharp masking again on this guy right here. So when I did that, it, it really brought this little barred spiral out quite, quite well. Uh, and uh, it is pretty cute though. I thought that that was a real neat looking one. That was, that, what I'm kind of, you know, what I'm trying to do is kind of try to provide something where I can um, use, you know, find, do kind of survey this stuff and say, hey, that looks like a neat galaxy. And then I can go and take the uh, C14 when I get that hooked up. But uh, th on that note, I called AP to find out about the mount because I still have, I've got notification, uh, my notification order in, but they haven't notified anybody. They say in the next few weeks, they're going to start uh, sending out notifications for the AP 1100. So I'm hoping I can get that baby in and, uh, and, 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 you know, get it installed and, and then I can really do some good stuff. Um, and then other than that, uh, that, that's the first shot. That's the first imaging that I've done in the observatory. Uh, and it was a pretty easy target because, you know, it was going up, it was going up the, the dome shutter kind of like this, see, so the, the long axis of the dome shutter, as opposed to going straight across, you know, I've got 27 inches. So I'm kind of thinking when I get the 14 inch in there in certain circumstances, it might be a little bit trickier to deal There's with. There's a lot of galaxies in there. Yeah. Oh, there's a ton of galaxies. And that's another thing about using on sharp masking when you have a lot of galaxies that are almost star-like, um, what I do with that on sharp masking is the larger structure stuff gets really uh, smoothed out. And that helps when you have galaxy clusters with lots and lots of almost star-like 
uh, uh, galaxies and, 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 it, and it softens those up and you can come back and you can actually do a contrast enhancement with the mask one way, okay, to bring out the nebula and then you can invert it to bring the stars out. Well, at the same time, you're bringing out the, the nucleus of some of these galaxies as well with that on-sharp masking technique. Yes. Can you save? Can you save? If you, you can you can you save the inversion a layer there and then go back and and uh, use the uh, and soften it and save the soft one so you can combine the two together. Yeah, two actually, what I do is I have uh, three masks that I use. I and they're based all on size. And you can think of it as a small bin to put stars in, a medium sized bin, and a, and then a large bin. For your larger structure items. Oh, I see. And the larger structure items, I soften uh, soften that that particular mass. I combine all those masses together to form one uh, mask, a combined type of mask. And I do that with uh, pix pixel math, uh, uh, where basically I use a max function. And what it does is it takes the maximum of any of the, let's say, any of the arguments that you put in there in terms of intensity and applies that to whatever area you're doing. So it, it basically is blending all three of those different size structures together to form one mask. Isn't that what you were talking about, Jerry? Or you, you did something, I thought you, you did something like that, that day that you, you had the flow chart. And, uh, or use it, a lot of masks in the flow chart thing. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at on that, and um, I I don't know what I'm not want to do a lot of stuff right now with what I've got because I'm I'm a little concerned uh, that when I get the mound in here, things might change. You know, as far as space and so forth. I don't I don't know if I'll have the same kind of space that I have now. But I'm assuming it'll probably be pretty close to what Bigger I observatory, Dick. Bigger observatory. A bigger <laughs> observatory. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to hear about that. <laughs> hey guys, I'm I'm gonna have to kick off. Like I had my uh, shingles shot today and I'm kind of hitting the wall. So okay. uh, don't mind me, but I'm gonna bail, okay? Okay. I'll, see I'll, I'll talk to you next week. And Tom, I know what you're gonna do with the with the meeting. Just give me a date uh so you know in, in May. In May. Uh, we'll do it in all May. right. Thank you. Okay, good night, guys. Okay, good night. night. So I've been working on uh, resurrecting Tom's old telescope. So this is Tom Whitmore's 10-inch uh, uh, F3.5. It uh, And so uh, I tried star testing it, and I ran into it a situation where unbeknownst to me that the sling to the mirror had loosened and it was uh, rested against some uh, posts and so I couldn't adjust it so I, I fixed that so I'm in the process of uh, of, uh, of refiguring that mirror to uh, a, a better shape okay well, that thing looks like the star splitter yeah, Tom did a very good job on it. I mean, um, it it's it almost looks like a mini me. You know what I mean? Because it's look how short the uh, the truss tubes are. <laughs> They're less than a foot long, and so um, I can see where what when I put the scope together, um, these um, points here they tend to rock. And so what I'm going to have to do is put traditional points to make sure that they're um, exactly, you know, perpendicular to the ring there. So, uh, Mike, anyways. would you say that, that that table that you're on, is that like two foot in diameter? Yeah, maybe a little bit less or something like that. It's, it's a 10 inch scope, so. So yeah, what's, the, what's the diameter of this scope and the F number? Yeah, 10 inch F 3.5. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I, you know, trying to get this, 
you know, this is what I was using for my 10 inch F6. Uh, and so I um, basically what I did was I put some pieces of dowel in here and put the extensions on and, you know, ran it that way. But I, you know, I wanted to finish Tom's mirror. Um, right now I'm um, testing it with the interferometer. I'm having issues getting getting things set up for some, it's, it's super critical because of the short focal length, but uh, it's just a matter of position it properly. And so I think probably one of the things we're gonna have to do is make a tester stand. So once I have the tester set up, um, I right now I'm using, I'm using the mirror stand that I use for grinding and polishing. And, and I have to move it away because it's way too close because of the shortness of it. So I, I think I need two stands. Um, move the polishing stand away and then have another one where I just use like a wedge of uh, plywood um, that's vertical and just put a, a piece of plywood on top and that should be steady enough for the interferometer to, to use. So I'm not funding around for the, the proper location for the interferometer when I take the mirror on and off. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, and the dome uh, is complete. Uh, I got the second uh, load of uh, fiberglass on there. It looks beautiful. Put another coating on there, smooth it all out. So it's gonna get painted. And I finally got in contact with uh, Babic uh, from next film. I said, hey, you know, I've got all these pieces you sent me. It's it's taking up room in my place. It's got to be costing you money, you know, and, you know, you could use it for shipment or something else. Tell me how to send it back to you. And he says, oh, just keep it. He says, the cost to ship it back to him is uh, much more money than for him to ship it to me. And he doesn't want the pieces. So I've got a a third of the next dome <laughs> that I don't know what to do with. But uh, probably what I might do is try and sell the pieces on eBay or something like that. And barring that, if nobody does it, um, uh, basically I I use the pieces to to. to I'll reform them with a heat gun and do other things with it, you know. You know, I have to, you know, it's taken up a lot of room in my shed. You know, the box is like four feet high, one feet wide. Um, and uh, I mean, and, uh, and, and, and three and a half feet long. So it takes up a lot of space. So I, I, I want to get rid of them, but it's not enough to make a dome, but, uh, who knows, I could probably, um, there's some things I can do with the dome, if it's the same material, glue it on there, like uh, where the, the door opens, make a little, um, make a little roof to keep the rain out of the, the, uh, the door. So I should be back in business. Uh, um, just been busy with uh, a lot of landscaping here, so. So we'll see. Um, I'll, I already I started working on the 10 inch already. I just need to go test it again, see how much closer it is. What about you, Jerry? How's the progress on your side? Coming along, we're up to painting it now. I've selected the interior color and Pat's working on the outside color. And they installed the security lock, but they didn't leave me the combination to it. And I accidentally locked myself out. So. Got to wait till the carpenter comes back tomorrow to fit into it. So I'm going to, and it's probably a week away from getting my telescope completed. So I figure in two weeks, around the 1st of May, we'll have a, a test system that I can test in there and make sure it's working right. Yeah, speaking about locks, the next stone uses this real cheap thing and it jams. It's, you know, it's just flimsy. Uh, it's it's made out of pressed steel that's been around and it 
it, it just jams up. I'm going to have to figure something to replace that because um, it got to the point I couldn't open it up. So, yeah, he gets what you pays for, I guess. Yeah. My door, this the door on this guy here, the top hinge had a gap in it, you know, with the door all the way closed. And now, unfortunately, it's one of these deals where the hinges are on the outside, see? So they have to be swaged for security reasons. So normally what you would do is you'd take that pin out and you bend over the, the hoops on the door side, you see, and then that moves the door. Because what was happening is just skewed a little bit so it was dragging on the... Uh, on the, on the door frame itself a little bit. So I went in there and took a pair of, uh, what did I do, a crescent. I took a crescent wrench and I just bent the tabs over with, with the pin still in there and fixed it that way. It's fine now. But uh -huh. I, uh, you know, all, all these domes have some sort of weakness or, you know, you know it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, my one thought is, your dome is metal, right? Aluminum, yeah. So you might be. I mean, the dome itself is plastic, actually. Excuse me. Oh, but the bottom, the 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 rings and everything like that are all aluminum. And, so. and the bottom part. So what you need to do is whatever your your connection from your um, that bridge, put it up to where it's above uh, the metal part. You might be shielding yourself. But, you know, it's very directional. Yeah. yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll get one of those. I've got I've got that on the shop right now. You can get these little, it's got like a little bracket, and then there's a pole that comes up, and then you mount it on that pole. And so what I could probably do is just mount it up higher than, let's say, the middle siding is. Um, now, I've got these guys on the middle building right now. And they're doing fine on the shop. So on, on those on the uh, on the bridge, I can show you the bridge too. They're not cheap, but they're. Uh, I don't know what did I do with the doggone thing, um, but they they do work pretty well. And uh, my sharing. There we go. Hang on a second here. Let me see if I can find it here. So you can see what I used. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, now go back over here. So these are uh, the thing that's nice about this is speed five gig you can get cheaper ones 2.4 gigs are cheaper you can usually get these what i liked about these guys though is these things are not exactly the easiest things to configure this is plug and play you put these things in here they're prepared so what that means is is that basically you got a virtual ethernet cable that's up to 10 miles long uh, and, uh, and, then, and so I've got one of these on the house and then one on the shop and it, it works. I just tried it out today and, uh, I've got a, a PLE switch in there. So I put my computer on one port and I put the uplink on the other port from, from the, uh, from the bridge on the shop and, uh, was able to get on the internet. So that's what I use for that guy right there. And, it, and, you know, it is expensive. But to get something like that that's pre-configured and it's plug and play, uh, I went for it right away. And I noticed a lot of people liked it too. Even people that were network expert people like it because they don't like to have to go configure these things all it's, the time. It's probably, call, it's probably what they call a transparent transponder, which you're not, you're not doing anything to the digital signals coming and going and forward. It's probably a high quality transmitter receiver pair that produces no distortion. So it doesn't get resynchronized or clocked or anything like that. What goes in goes out and whatever degradation there is, 
probably so minimal it's not okay i lost you yeah yeah um, it's a lot cheaper than putting in conduit <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, I wish in, in, in hindsight, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I wish that I'd done what Jerry did, you know, and ran a hard uh, internet connection or ethernet cable, uh, both to the shop and to out here, because I mean, I had to run power all the way out here, so we might as well run that too. <laughs> but this, this works really well, and it's, I'd say, second best uh to that sort of thing and if i get it over here you know let's say and i want to go wireless too i can always uh just get an ap out here uh, for that uh, so that'll be fine so that worked out really i would i thought it was a really good solution for what i had to do you know um it, it, it's nothing fancy but it works type of thing so as long as it's reliable and last it doesn't get trouble that's what yeah, that's well, I, that I don't know yet. Yeah, because I haven't really checked it out too much. I was going to show you the masking. This is the mask. You can see that on the mask, you have this, like, for example, on the one where the, um, the barred spiral, that's this guy down here. What's really nice about that technique is it's it's a fairly on sharp mass. So you can really get the the extremities of the nebula or uh, of the galaxy that way. Uh, so I've been using that kind of technique a lot. Do we lose Dick's voice? I'm here. Are you here? Yeah. yeah. So that's using Pix Insight to do that work. Huh? Pix Insight does that. Yeah, there's something called Pixel Math, and um, it 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 is the thing that allows you to uh, to kind of manipulate these things and and make a mask like this. Uh, not everybody does that. There's there are tools that you can use that uh, are specifically for um, making star masks, but I don't really like to use them. They don't seem to work very well for me. Uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why I, I don't particularly care, care to use any of that stuff. Um, but let's see here. Uh, I was going to show you something else, but now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I guess it must have been too important. But anyway, um, yeah, it it's uh, I, I like using Pixin site. I think there's a lot, you know. I mean, if you're to stack, it's not that hard to stack stuff. For example, if you wanted to see what an, all the data looks like for that guy right there, I'll show you, so you know how how that's done. Pretty much, it's it's just like anything else, you know it. You got to get in and figure it out. Now, this guy right here, this is a script that runs the uh, the stacking. You put your lights, your flats, your darks, and your bias in here. Down here, this is your reference frame, and this is your output directory where all the stuff goes. When you put these frames in here, it goes ahead and duplicates everything Pits Insight does and puts it in its own format, and it puts it in this output directory. So you get a combination, you get uh, one directory for lights, you get an, another one for your darks and you know, and so on for your biases. And that's how that's basically done. And you can set the various parameters in here that you want. For example, if you want to, uh, your registration parameters, 500 stars is usually what I set it for. So it's only a 500 star match, but it seems to do fairly well. So um, that, it, you can do just basically everything that you can, everything that you can think of, you can do right in this environment. You don't need anything else. I sometimes use a deep sky stacker though, because it, it sometimes is superior for certain things. It's easy to use, especially for comments. Yes. So Dick, what was the, the time on those exposures? Those are six, uh, se excuse me, seven minute exposures. It's uh, ISO 800 with Canon 6D 35 millimeter camera. 
uh, I had to clip out the uh, the one area, you know, where we talked about the F5 problem. Uh, and that was funny because we, we had an F5 scope here. So if we look at uh, the all nights data, um, let me see, I'll bring that up here and I'll show you what that looks like. Come on. And I think this is interesting too, because it's red. And the reason why I think it's red is I think that the doggone pan tilt zoom camera is, is it's got about six LEDs and it's still on the dome. You know, you saw the picture of the dome raising. Well, it's still, it was still in that position when this was shot. So I think there's a little of light pollution. So this is just a raw stack, but you can see down here, you see that bar? Yeah. That's the mirror. <laughs> That's the old mirror. That's mm -hmm. the problem I can't do anything about. It's a five. It's a F5, it's a focal ratio of instruments with F5, a 35 millimeter camera. You're going to see that mirror down here in the lockup position. And that's what that's causing that vignette. Hmm. So, uh, what camera is that? A Canon 60? 60. Yeah. I think any 35 millimeter uh, single lens reflex camera that has a mirror is going to have that problem at, at if it's a if it's a full frame sensor yeah 35 millimeter uh, i'm not sure if you go higher uh you might have problems for example the the mp 127 is goes up to 54 millimeters so uh if you had something that was even larger you may <laughs> even have more of a severe problem with that focal ratio so any any instrument i would think that in that focal ratio because of the light cone and the way that it hits that sensor you're going to get vignetting uh, because of the mural in the lockup position. Okay. okay, well, I'm going to have to sign off. Very interesting. Mike's yawning, so <laughs> all right. <laughs> call, it, call it good. Thanks, and thanks I, everyone. And I took a three-hour uh, nap today, too. <laughs> oh, why? <my. laughs> He'll be up all night. <laughs> well, I was, I was doing a lot of yard work. <laughs> we'll sign off also. Okay. All right, bye -bye. see you guys. Yeah. Okay.